Hello everyone, I hope you're in the middle of having a fantastic interactive PASS conference. Uh, my name is Jakub Schindelaj, I'm doing a modern history PhD at Charles University in Prague and today I'll be talking about contrafactual history in a specific mod called Kaiserreich, Legacy of the Weltkrieg for the game Hearts of Iron 4. So without further ado, uh, let's, let's start. So you've probably maybe heard about the game Hearts of Iron 4, it was released in 2016, it's a grand strategy video game. An interesting thing, uh, it's supposed to be adequate even for 70 year olds and above. I'll get to this a little bit later. Um, if you're yeah, if you're not uh, familiar with the game, I will be showing some images of or video footage of gameplay so you will get some better idea about this. Uh, Hearts of Iron is one of uh, several uh, uh, titles and franchises by, Par by Swedish studio and developer company Parox Interactive. Uh, it's among these uh, franchises, it's the one that's focusing on the most recent pa past or history. It's focusing on the period of 1936 to 1948 or a little bit later because the game actually doesn't end until the Second World War is resolved. And um, important thing to note that among these franchises, I think it clearly can be said that it's the most reductionist in a sense of it's very much focusing on uh, the military side of history compared to the other titles. Uh, all of these games are conceptual simulations, meaning that uh, they're really presenting some kind of a uh, view of history that's not realistic in a sense of how historical actors have seen history. For example, you're not seeing uh, the 30s from the perspective of an individual, but you have this overview. You will see uh, the view of the world map and you have these uh, symbols and stand-ins for specific things. And all, another important thing about these games Grand strategy games, they, they all invite counterfactual scenarios. Um, meaning that you can change history and see some outcomes that didn't really happen. Okay, moving on. Um, Hearts of Iron 4 has a very reductionist uh, representation of politics, society in general, and culture. It can be said that they exist in the game only in a sense that, that they can either support or hinder the, your efforts when you control a country, so your efforts into preparing for war, waging the war, etc. The ideologies of the systems uh, existing in that time, uh, such as fascism or communism, are not really delved into, so sometimes really uh, these factions feel more of like blue team, red team and brown team, uh, instead of really representing some kind of a s sophisticated and back backgrounded uh, uh, ideology. Okay, uh, important thing to note, a particularity, understandable particularity for the commercial, uh, for it to be commercially sellable. Uh, some of the events or aspects of the Second World War are not included, so it's a kind of a cleaner version of Second World War. Uh, but some of these, let's say, very controversial and negative aspects such as atomic bombings or, for example, Soviet purges and the many deaths are mentioned and represented in the game. Uh, I think Sylvain Le Clorec uh, very much well summarized uh, the representation of history by Her Hearts of Iron 4 in saying that it presents the war seen from above so high that you can't see people anymore. This is very much the case. Uh, you have this, as you will see, this view from the top. You don't see the impact of your action and everything is very implied and abstract. If we go to the rating, uh, it says in the above that there's a lot of implied violence, but not explicit violence. Okay, moving back. Um, I think that this limitation should is quite problematic because what these conceptual grand strategy games do very well they present a self-sustained functional model that doesn't include, for example, in this case, the Holocaust, I will talk in a minute, but they manage to explain the period and show you how it in revolves and evolves uh, without these important aspects. And this can be very damaging because, as we know with economic models, for example, uh, there's this power of these models. They are very convincing because they show you things, how they work, even though there are important factors you're not including. 
So, uh, there's to explain the policy of Paradox Interactive to the Holocaust and Holocaust denial and stuff like that, to avoid these issues completely, they stated and they repeat the, uh, the policy of not mentioning these aspects at all. That means uh, death camps, uh, the Holocaust, the persecution of Jews is not mentioned at all in the game. And uh, more than that, even discussions on forums are specifically banned from these topics. So you cannot raise these at all. Now I'll move to an excerpt from an in-game tutorial video that you can actually see in the game that uh, is very bizarre in a sense because it talks about invasion of Soviet Union which can be considered one of the most bloodiest parts of the war uh, in a very non-problematic and straightforward way. So we're moving on to that. With our armies in position and eyeing up the Soviet forces we can start to construct our battle plan. For example, with our infantry heavy group, we want to make a solid push into Russia. We select the group, click on offensive line, and then right click to draw the line we want them to advance to. And when hovering over the plan's arrow, we will see the predicted path that our troops will take. Finally, once you have of course triumphed over your enemy, you may wish for certain areas to be garrisoned. Use the garrison command to assign units where they will defend the area, particularly ports and major cities. In this case, we will defend some of our newly acquired coastline. So here you can see a very banal mentioning and uh, talking about the triumph of Nazi Germany that's presented to people age 7 and above, uh, which is very problematic I think. And I really don't understand why they decided to include a tutorial specifically played by Nazi Germany, but that's not the main point of today's presentation. Today's presentation is mainly about a mod for this game that you have seen for now. Uh, that's called Kaiserreich, the legacy of the Wealth Creek. And it basically the scenario is based on the question, what if Germany had won the First World War? Not the second, but the first one. Um, so this mod, to give you some a very short background, it was already developed for, pre, uh, for previous titles in this franchise. So it exists since 2005. Uh, the creators and the representative of this mod say that the community around it and the mod is possibly the largest alter his, history IP in the world. Uh, this might be true. Uh, I'm not sure how we could count, for example, the Men in the High Castle TV series as an IP. But definitely there is a strong community and uh, it's a, if not the largest, it's a very significant uh, alter history IP. It is over half a million subscribers in the Steam Workshop, with considering the sales of the Hearts of Iron 4, which are estimated between 2 and maybe 5 millions, that's quite a significant achievement for a single mod. Um, interesting thing about this is that in the developer diaries on YouTube, for example, you can hear the creators and developers talk about how they were conducting their own research, historical research, to develop the scenarios in specific regions, for example, for the China rework. So this is an interesting example of history by the public or from the below as well. Uh, moving on, um, the mod and the universe of the mod doesn't exist only in the mod itself and in the game. There is also production by an uh, independent film company called Kaiser Cat Cinema. I will show you a brief teaser for a film, hopefully if you have time, uh, in a short while. You have also live-action role-playing streaming, uh, impersonating, for example, time leaders of these fictional countries and regimes. Let's plays of this mod, of course, and also quite significant uh, part of this uh, transmedial universe of Kaiserreich is the Kaiserreich merchandise uh, that's also used to fund this, this mod and to further produce more material, etc. Uh, this is very important because uh, Kaiserreich decided to use artworks for sharing information and recruiting new people and involving them and uh, for world building. To show you some examples, for these conceptual simulations you've seen you only see the map of the world and you don't see really the details. So even Hearts of Iron 4 is using these very few images to give you the sense uh, of the era, of the details that you really have to uh, imagine in your head normally. 
And that's exactly what the Kaiserreich mode is doing as well. And because uh, these conceptual simulations rely very much on these few uh, pieces where you establish the atmosphere, it kind of works quite well for the mod because they can make few of these artworks. They can, for example, they've managed to uh, transform a lot of the era posters for their new alt history setting. Um, and this brings flavor beyond the game for this uh, alt history universe. So now I'll play you a short teaser for the film. If we're doing okay on time, if not, we'll have to skip it. Freedom and equality. I used to believe the United States stood for those ideals. Then I learned. I used to believe an American's voice mattered, that our vote was important and would impact the heading of the nation. I used to believe that Jim, who lived down the lane and who wasn't allowed to drink from the same fountain as me, was equal. Then I learned. I used to believe that Thomas, who worked at the mill and had his head cracked open by a scabs club, could pull himself up by his bootstraps out of the shack way in the back. Then I learned. I learned the truth about my country. They told us that our voices mattered, that we would be able to speak up when we were unhappy. They lied. Not everybody has learned this. There are those who see this wave of change and fear it. But they'll see. I'll show them. They don't have other options. We can probably all see how even this alternate history can resonate with our own history or ongoing society and hopefully this case will rest deeply in the alt history department. Uh, just to give you some more insight on, in the, on the world of Kaiserreich, uh, again uh, the world, this alternative timeline is again on, set, on track for a second world war, this time it's the author of the original system, the Versailles system, France, that is the the main revisionist uh, party in this universe, uh, is the socialist France or Commune of France, uh, that's trying to change the world order in this universe. What makes this game more interesting, I think, is that it tries to uh, work like this people's history, try to show the talk to talk about the losers and. It's allowed by this contrafactual scenario because you can have much more diverse what if scenarios, uh, talking about uh, movements and ideas that failed or were marginalized in our history, to try to bring them forward and to talk about them. Uh, we can say that the mod tries, and I'll argue that it in at least partially succeeds in making the perception of history or the representation of history a little bit more from below and less from above even if still you're looking mainly at the world from the top view there are these uh, ways especially events and stuff like that that try to pull you down as i'll show for example with the example of representation of women in hearts of iron 4 there are very few women represented uh, as uh, either country leaders or leaders of military these are the main let's say characters that exist in the game on the contrast, uh, Kaiserreich has many, many um, female leaders, uh, either presidents or leaders of respective positions. Uh, for example, uh, in the case of the US, the former the Great Britain, uh, but also, for example, non-European countries like China, uh, here represented by Sang Quinling, or South America. Uh, furthermore, women are not only represented in these uh, political roles, but also in the role of the military, which is still remains large part of the gameplay. So the emphasis that even women are taking part in the combat that is simulated and modeled in the game uh, is much, very much stressed. Uh, but also other aspects of uh, life 
of historical life are represented. For example, very much uh, uh, something that uh, plays a strong law role in our life today uh, is sports. Many people live and breathe for sports, and it's much more important than ongoing political events. And I think this mod succeeds in showing that people are living by other things and we're concerned by other things than just war. Uh, so you here you have example, for example, talking about football or Stanley Cup, baseball, etc. Uh, also, arts are represented much more. It's uh, quite these small details. You have these pop-ups talking about, for example, Mexican morales or some uh, art, some novels being published. For example, here the Hobbit, in the bottom right corner. Uh, and it's these small things, uh, but that constantly uh, pop up for you and uh, make you think about other things than just building tanks, planes, and planning war. Uh, also, there are these um, events of natural occurrence that are mentioned in this event, in this mechanic of events. For example, the heat wave of 1936 and floods that hit the United States. And they are not just uh, abstractly mentioned, they are also connected to the ongoing political uh, events and they try to explain how these natural events influence our society or could. Uh, importantly, uh, it's not only about representing much more women, it's the Kaiserreich tries to be this grayish, no good, no bad guys uh, scenario. And also you have many of these, uh, we can say, negative uh, uh, movements and people. For example, you have also mostly quite prominently figured who was voted the worst historical Britain of the 20th century, for example. Uh, what I think is interesting about Kaiserreich is that it tries to talk about these very hard and difficult issues with new labels. Because we know that, for example, the label fascist uh, is thrown today almost at anyone, irrespective of the political spectrum. So Kaiserreich is using these different labels, national populists, uh, totalists and syndicalists, instead of, for example, communists. And I think this may, um, let's say, uh, make the debate less passionate and more, more cold and rational, but uh, it remains to be seen, I don't know. Uh, what I think is quite important is it manages to deal with issues that, that Hearts of Iron 4 totally ignored. For example, the anti-Semitism is mentioned in Kaiserreich, the persecution of Jews and, for example, their uh, emigration from nationalist France government, the apartheid in South Africa, and, the, for example, the very difficult efforts to tackle the persecution and violation of blacks' rights in South Africa. Uh, civilian suffering during the war, which is completely ignored in the Hearts of Iron, is mentioned uh, in the mod. Also, colonial oppression and violence and discrimination is represented. Lynching in the American South is mentioned. And also more obscure, uh, extreme movements, for example, as the Brazilian far right is also represented. Uh, so what I think is important to take away from this, uh, I think definitely Kaiserreich is an interesting case uh, for its uh, size and the, s the significance of being able to establish this kind of universe and all the production around it. Uh, what I've shown you were these small changes, small examples of these minor events that, uh, of course, don't change the main gameplay of the game. Uh, you could say that the heart of the game remains the same, but I think that uh, it can be argued that if you have a lot of and significant amount of these small changes, they in the end turn and uh, change the game in a major fashion. So it's no longer just about war in the 30s and 40s. It's much more about the history of the society, of changing the society. Um, I think the mod can also uh, uh, succeed in con circumventing these controversial issues with the alternative history because you're no longer talking about, for example, a bloody massacre that involves someone's grandparents. I think Kaiserreich really succeeds in showing uh, and simulating a model of a world of n in 1930s and 40s that's beyond militaristic. It's not only about uh, building these armies and waging wars, but it shows a complex view on history, on uh, social struggles, um, political movements, etc. And I think one interesting question we can pose is that if fans are able to do this, maybe Pargo Paradox Interactive could do this as well. So that's all for me. Uh, I thank you for your attention. I s I'm looking forward to any questions or comments, and uh, I wish you a nice day.